What's up, everybody? Welcome to another exciting edition of the Low Budget Show with Damon Millard. Oh, oh, here I come, here I come. I'm Damon Millard. You joined us for a good one. On today's show, we have award-winning actor and director Eric Tucker. He'll be here. He'll teach us the secret to his success. Moonshine. He'll tell us what he's most proud of. I've gone three and four days without showering. And we'll reenact the diner scene from when Harry met Sally. Uh, 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 I'll have what she's having. You're not going to want to miss any of that, so make sure you stick around. Also, on today's show, we have a special drop-in guest. And we'll learn about tents, pickling, and marketing. Gorilla marketing. That's right, it's going to be an exciting one, so thanks for joining us. Let's hop right on in. Get a hold of me. Damon at DamonMillard.com, Damon at DamonMillard.com. Send, uh, send, send me some messages. Tell me, tell me about your dreams and hopes and also your night dreams. That'd be exciting. One time I had a dream I had like a duck beak and um, people were feeding me change in the park. Maybe it wasn't a dream. Maybe it was a premonition. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen? One of the only people who emails me is Joanne from Joanne Fa- Fabrics. She emails me every day. She said, what do you want from me, Joanne? If you have a sale every day, it's not a sale. That's your regular prices. Whew. Okay, so I'm a little out of it. This is the second time I'm recording this because I fucked up. I, um, I kept looking. This is the lens right here, right? And I kept, I kept looking over here, and it made me look... It made me look blind it i looked i looked ridiculous to be honest with you that's why almost no feature films are shot on phones look it up you can google that i just got back from the doctors and uh i got a prostate exam yeah it's not fun dude stuck his fingers in there and uh then he goes did that hurt i'm like compared to, to what yeah it did. It's as bad as they say. It is. It is. I feel like I was violated, but I at least, but he, at least he asked me first. So he went in. I don't think he used three fingers, though. I don't know why. I'm, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. It's like shocking at first. It's like pretty shocking, and then, and then you, and then you just, then you settle in. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was. <laughs> it's very fast. I'm not gonna get into it, but uh, I might be in trouble here, guys. I might have a serious issue. This could be the last low-budget show. You know how, like, an artist's work isn't worth anything until they're dead? The low-budget show could be very valuable soon. So, yeah, those things are going on, and um, it pisses me off I had to redo this episode. It's not as smooth as it looks, this show, you know that? I'm always trying to avoid jump cuts and stuff like that. Send me some well wishes in my inbox if you, if you wouldn't mind. You know what's gross about the um, about the prostate exam? The guy had to use lube. I don't know why I keep showing you multiple fingers. I don't. I'm. I'm pretty sure it was just one. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fucked up if he like had four in there and he was like, they had to use lube and that was that was cold and um, and I didn't shower right away. What's that say about me? Is this a show? Probably not. That's what's going on. It's been a little bit. It's been a little bit of time since the last episode, and that's because I was on the road. I did some stand up. I was in Wisconsin, and then I was in Rhode Island. Oh, I'm hopefully gonna get Eric Marino. I went on the road. It was Eric Marino, Wendy Wilkins. We had some adventures there. Played some non traditional venues, some rowdy bars. At at one of the venues, there was a gun raffle, and that happened before I went on stage. So. There were armed people at the show. 
which I didn't like. Um, you know, so I really brought I really brought my best. They were all they were all over the place. Hugs were given. I might be a super spreader, and I'm cool with that. Um, I mean, not that I want people to die, but I would be cool with uh, maybe getting a quick mention on CNN. Uh, super spreader comedian Damon Millard spreads laughter and COVID throughout the Midwest. I would that would be a good headline. Remember there was a Fresca shortage back in the summer. Fresca's back. I shouldn't be drinking this. It's gonna it's gonna cause me some headaches when it comes to editing. Because the can could, like, appear and reappear. <laughs> it would be really weird if it did that. What's going on, Dean? Oh, hey, everybody. Look, it's my twin brother, Dustin. You gonna... You wanna come on the show real fast? Yeah, hey, what's up, Dean? Yeah, man. I'd love to hang out for a little bit, you know? Because Ethel's not here, right? No, she's out in Pennsylvania getting cigarettes. They're cheaper down there. Okay, then, yeah, I'll hang out, <laughs> you know? Why I get back to the halfway house by 9? Are you still doing that stand-up? You are even though a lot of people tell you you weren't funny and stuff. That's cool. Well, you gotta have your dreams. Like, one time I had a dream that, um, I found a, a motorbike. And, um, yeah, and I drove it all to Europe. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, but when I got there, I didn't have the right kind of pesos. Oh, uh, that's not good. They don't really <laughs> make any sense. Yeah, I don't know. Dreams are weird. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, dreams are weird, Dame. And, um... Oh, I ever tell you, I ever tell you my dream as a little kid was uh, to not get burnt with cigarettes by mom? Yeah. What have you been up to? I've been sleeping in a tent. I'm sleeping in a tent by a highway. Because me and my girlfriend broke up. I didn't tell you about that. Did you get caught stealing her silverware again? No. No, nothing like that. It's just, um... Well, you know how she was getting disability, right? For her diabetes and the fact that she don't have a foot. Right. They had a detective following her around and saw her eating a whole chocolate cake at the bus stop. And they have denied her her disability, so we ain't been able to pay the rent lately. And so, yeah, so we've been kicked out. We were sleeping in a tent for a little bit. And, um, damn, you know how they say, like, um, more money, more problems? Well, it actually works the other way, too. When you don't have money, you also get problems. Yeah, well, what I really wanted to tell you, I wanted to talk to your, you got like a couple viewers, right? Yeah, well, I wanted to, um, I got these new pickle, Dustin Earnhardt Pickle Company, and, um, I want to go on here and maybe do like a little commercial, you know, like, Dustin Pickles, man, those, those are fucking good pickles. Yeah, I wrote that one myself, and, um, I'm going to put, I'm going to try and get them to sell them in stores, you know? I mean, you really think they're going to sell them at the grocery store? They're not even full. Yeah, well, I didn't want to fill the whole thing up because then it'll be more expensive, you know? And then, um, because I'm trying to keep them under, like, a dollar, you know? And, um, where'd you, did you learn how to do that, or? Well, you know I'm a master pickle maker, right? Self-taught? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've been making, you know, I've been putting stuff in jars for a long time. Screws and, like, change and stuff like that and then um one time i put like um i put a sale manner in there and i got an idea like oh this could hold food too you know yeah anything that fits in a jar is like my favorite thing yeah so you can get these for 99 cents right now um on my website if you go to damon Millard.com, that's, that's my your website. website right if you go way down to the bottom there's the secret link where you could buy dustin earnhardt pickles and um just visit DamonMillard.com. Sorry about that, man. I had a hacker get into your little account. Your password is password, so it wasn't even that hard, really. Okay. Yeah, yeah I would step it up, man. So I got this little hacker. Yeah, he's a nine-year-old kid, man. He's got glasses. That's how I know he was good at computers. And I just asked him. I was like, hey, you think you could get myself a little link on there? That's what they're called. They're called links. And what you do is you hit those links, and those links will take you to another page where you can do other stuff. Links been around for a long time, Dame. I, don't, I can't believe you didn't know that. Did you design that website yourself? You did? Because it's, it's kind of funky on a telephone. All right, but that's it. Yeah, I was just going to get out of here. 
wanted to tell um, your 12 viewers about these pickles. 99 cents, DamonMillard.com. Scroll to the bottom, you'll see a little image of a pickle. You click on that, that'll take you right to the page where you can order 99 cent Dustin Earnhardt pickles. Very spicy. Well, yeah, it's probably the radiator juice. I, yeah, okay. Well, I'm out of here then. Thank you. Thanks for letting me have a little time. Okay. All right. Uh, Dustin Earnhardt Millard, everybody. We'll be right back. Dustin Pickles. Man, those, those are fucking good pickles. This part of the show is brought to you by Non-Menthol Newports. Non-Menthol Newports answers the question, what if you could smoke a mullet? Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Low Budget Show. Joining me now is Eric Tucker. He is an actor and director for Bedlam Theater Company. How are you doing, Eric? Pretty good. Thank you for having me. Uh, I feel honored that you asked me to do this. <laughs> you said it was like interesting people, and I, you know. I'll try to be interesting. Oh, no, I'm sure you'll be just fantastic. I've interviewed uh, usually stand-up comics, yeah. but I also, like, just interviewed my college roommate once. Oh. Too, so. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Anywhere in between there, and you're good. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I haven't seen you in a long time. I know. <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen any real people in a long time. Yeah, it's nice to see real people. Yeah, the pandemic kind of got in the way. Yeah. You've been stuck in the house a lot? Yeah, well, I was. I mean, for I think the first many or few months definitely was a lot of house with the kids. And luckily we, we can let it, we have a backyard. But now I'm definitely getting out more as work is picking up and I've had to go in the city a couple times and yeah. it feels pretty good. Well, I already work from home. Uh, I do a little uh, adult editing. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So for me, not too big of a change, but you're, you were like, I mean, always busy, always going, yes. travel, 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 travel. Did, did you enjoy it a little bit? Be honest. Did you enjoy the, the forced downtime? Definitely. You know, I have two little kids, so yeah. it's been really nice to have tons of time with them that I wouldn't probably have. Right. They'd be at daycare or whatever. So that's been really, it's been great. You, you mentioned you have two kids. And yes. But you've been at this for a long time, so when you making kids, you've been at the yeah, you've been made yeah. You've I've been, been I've worked for years, right? Yeah, I was working on it for years. I and, made one on accident. Um, you did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I yeah. miscounted the pumps. I was like, nope. Oh. I, had, I thought I had two more, but no. Yeah. Now I have yeah. paid child support for eighteen years. Um, so, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I guess what I was getting at was. You know, you've been creating theater for so many years, and then you yes. started a family. How did that change things? Did that? Well, it definitely made um, just scheduling things harder. You know, you yeah. gotta. You know, it's like everything's like kids, 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 and then work, and then right back to kids as much as you can. But I think what happens is your life kind of makes room for them. You know, it, it works out somehow. Yeah. Sometimes you bring them to work. Luckily, we're in a profession where when push comes to shove, you just bring them to the theater. Yeah. You know, um, and that works sometimes, but, um, otherwise it, it, it's been pretty okay. I have, I have to say it's not, it, you know, we just, life makes room. You deal with it, you know, me you, and Zoom, yeah, you, we have this saying like, how are we doing this? How are we adults? Yeah. How are we paying rent? And like, yeah. you, you just somehow do it. You know? I know it is weird though. We ask ourselves that too. Like how in the heck, how do we make this happen? And we all, it just somehow we do it. Well, I mean, now I'm, I'm just not, it's nonstop working on this um, web series, you know, that we're doing. Tell me more oh. about the project itself then. What is, what is it? I had had this idea a while back about taking some different Shakespeare plays and sort of twisting all the plots together and making like an episodic TV show out of Shakespeare's plays, not updating the language, but just like, you know, mixing the plots in and also combining some characters to kind of, you know, suture it together or whatever. I was realizing, well, we're not going to be doing any stage plays this fall and maybe not till next fall. If then, 
I thought, well, maybe, maybe we could shoot some of these as a web series or release them sort of in a pay-per-view thing or see what we can do with it as a Bedlam project. I've been busy in my life, but this is like another level of just so many details and tasks that have to be done before you start. A lot of stuff you didn't see coming, like, you know, cause like, I mean, you're an, you're an old pro at theater, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's I've been I've done shoots and stuff as an actor, but it's my first time directing, um, and so it's like there's just so many details that go into the planning, and then and then I'm also really producing because it's for Bedlam, and then this particular project is just so many actors, and it's insane. Are you excited mm -hmm. that like because now it's a new medium that you get to like experiment with, like you know pre-recorded stuff or oh yeah i've always wanted to to direct film or tv i just um I've never had the time and i've always he's locked up doing theater so i'm very excited i might not want to go back and make theater <laughs> we'll see. yeah this could be the chance to make the leap right yeah i really just am very happy doing this yeah well we start shooting um saturday it's yeah and then and we shoot for three about three weeks so we we go from saturday to november 1st and it so we're shooting about two hours of content in three weeks and you know it's just like we really lucked out in a lot of places too like all the locations came together really well and and sort of centralized because there's like 48 locations it's not a script that's conducive for a small budget because no. there's like 30 actors and 45 locations or whatever and but so it's a little crazy trying to pull that off. People who have like brains that are organized, like like can organize people and I got to give it to them. It's not easy. The big thing I'll just be hoping COVID doesn't like. Right. On top of doing a brand new medium, you yeah. got this entire world that no one's ever navigated yeah. before that you've yeah. got to also figure out. Yeah. And everybody's testing every couple of days. And so what happens if someone's positive and who's replaceable right away? I mean, it's, you yeah, know. you got to plan for all that. Yeah. It's crazy. How do you approach a new play? Like, do you see it as, as you're reading it? Are you getting the ideas like yeah. right away? Um, for my viewers, if yeah. there's more than one, uh, or yeah. my viewer, uh, yeah. <laughs> you do a lot of unique stuff. If you've never seen a Bedlam play, I highly recommend it you do a lot of unique stuff yeah as far as the setting changing yeah um like this the scene is a character of its own if i could say that you, yeah that makes sense i think that's cool i mean thank you but yeah there's like so desks will move and become a desk will become a building or <laughs> you know, yeah how does that work like well how does your mind do that well i don't i don't know some stuff i see it when Definitely before, as I'm reading something, I'll kind of get the vibe of it if it really hits me and then I'll sort of just launch from there. But then so much of the stuff that I feel like comes in the moment working in the room with people and what they're giving me and then I'll just have ideas about something and then I'm watching a scene and like in Crucible, there's this long court scene and, you know, I was kind of doing it and I would, and I, as we would get to a point, I was just like, you know, the whole room should just we should just change all the furniture, you know, just to kind of let the room shift with the emotional shift and, and see what the room would look like when all the emotion changes and can we suck it all in one pile or can it spread out again or, you know, that kind of thing. And I just thought it also, I feel like that is so satisfying for an audience, you know, anything that sort of keeps them galvanized to it, you know? Uh, so I think it, it's both, you see stuff before and then you find stuff, you know, yeah when you're uh, doing it as an actor director you direct yourself is there a part in the beginning of a run where you're like so worried about everybody else and all the moving parts that it like, yeah. affects your your own performance yeah i don't enjoy it much anymore because i feel like i'm always shortchanging the acting part like i don't get the lines in as fast and then i also am not I'm all I'm always thinking about everything else so it's not until opening night where I feel like then I can really just focus on myself and by then it's like so then I'm finding all this stuff as I go that I could have found in rehearsal and lead up to opening and so it never it's not as fun to do it I feel like in terms of like 
like whenever I'm talking to actors and giving them notes or noticing things they're doing, I just sort of take all those notes myself too. You know, I think in some ways, if you teach something, you probably get better at it yourself or you're reminding yourself all the time. So I think directing's like that, but it's, it's, I used to have more fun at it because I think I, when you're younger, you're more cavalier about stuff. Now I just think I suck. So <laughs> it doesn't, I don't have, a, you know, it's not as fun. I'd rather have someone else telling me yeah. what they want me to do as an actor. It's not, you know, you want that outside eye. What's the funnest part of it then? What's the, mo what's the most do you get out of it? The reason I started doing it so much acting and directing at the same time was because like I didn't want to audition and stuff. I, it was easier to produce my own work and then I could act in it and then I would direct it because I always had a vision of what I wanted it to look like. If I'm acting in it, and the best part is like getting to be up there and then do the show with everybody. Cause I usually am casting a bunch of people that I either, you know, I really like and have worked with. And so there's that sort of family aspect to it. It's fun. You know, you're, you're out there doing a thing with everybody and like a team sport. So that part of it, I love. Well, I know this just because I've been behind the curtain on some conversations, but I know you guys will fuck with each other sometimes. Yeah. Right. Totally. Right. Yeah, right. And that's fun. I that all that stuff I love, like being able to kind of have your own little code going right. on up there, especially if the audience is sort of not giving it to you or whatever. But right. yeah, yeah. But, on a night where it's like the stakes are low or you're like, yeah. ah, these guys aren't into it. Maybe yeah. let's have a little fun up here. Yeah. Yeah. I used to play this game. I had another comedian that we would go and we would do like these dog shit shows. You know what I mean? Bar shows, middle of nowhere. Yeah. Back yeah. in the early days, we were like, we were like these two road guys, you know? And oh, that's, that's so fun. That's cool. He would write something on a, on a piece of paper. And then I would write something on a piece of paper and we would swap and put them in our pocket. Oh my God. Any time during the, so <laughs> I'm on stage and I'm just talking, right? And at any time during my set, he can just raise his hand and go, you know, make a, a motion like this. And you have to look. And then I got to pull it out no. and do or say whatever it says. And man. You have to say it? Say or do, like sometimes it would be oh. like, okay, uh, now you're Abe Lincoln. You know what I mean? Just like, oh my God. Sometimes you're killing and you, he does this thing and you're like, oh man, no. and you pull it out and you're like, oh, this is just going to tank my great performance that or you're amazing. dying and you're like, you pull it out and it's like, okay, uh, drink the, drink the beer off the table in front of you. Right. <laughs> and you're just like, All right. So you just grab the person's beer off yeah. the table and just drink it. And then the, God, that's so much power. You give so much power to the other person. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I was in a show once at Trinity Rep, which is where I went to grad school. And so I was think I was still a, I was still a student, but I was in a pretty decent role. It was a huge cast. It was like three penny opera. And um and we and so where I'm on stage with all my a lot of my teachers every night because they were company yeah. members and I was a student. And there were these other guys who were lower classmen under me who were playing kind of like non-speaking roles. And we would all come on together. They were like my crew. I was one of these bad guys. And I was supposed to look at a note every night and they would write the most crazy shit. And it was really hard not to break. And it was, and one, I mean, and some of it was stuff that you, you would never want an audience member to read because it was really lewd. Right. And, um, and so one night, the guy, one of the guys hands it to me and they're trying to break me and I'm used to it. And I open it and it's just lewd. And I had another piece of paper that was blank, planned, and yes. I switched it in my hand and I took his paper. I kind of laughed and I tossed it into the audience. Oh. And he, this guy, this other actor, freaked out so much and was freaking out the rest of the show thinking he was probably going to get kicked out of school if someone read it. Right, because it was that bad. Because I, I just tossed it. I knew he was suffering the rest of the show. <laughs> Yes. And then I let him, and then I showed him his note at the end. I said, ah, I oh. it. but I was just waiting for, it just reminded me of your note thing. I think it's so funny. Yeah. That's really fun to do. People breaking each other on stage. It's just, it's cruel, but I love it. Yeah. It must be heartbreaking though. At the end of a run, you've, you've built like, I mean, you've given your all with these same crew and you're like working as yeah. a team to do this great performance. And then, the, and then all that has to come to an end. You know what I mean? When it's really an amazing experience, it is hard. I think it because you know people will cry and 
Yeah, I, it's really hard because you build a thing and you, if, especially if it's not, like if it's good and you love the cast and also then, and the audiences are loving it, it's kind of a hit. That's really sad to close because it's such a satisfying experience. I've definitely been in several plays that were the opposite, whereas <laughs> literally barely just not quitting and just could not yeah. wait till it ended that it was so miserable. Oh, God. Yeah, no oh, doubt. I'm gone, right? Oh, miserable. Yeah. It, Some it, has a few of those. What about a horror story? You got a horror story for me? Some um, a night uh, something didn't work out or one time I was doing this production of Othello and I was playing Iago and this guy was Othello and we were there was this group scene where we're all on and there's a fight that I've caused to break out this fight, right? And then Othello comes on and he's like, gotta break up the fight and bring everybody to a standstill. We all had these like clubs to, for like beating. So there's this whole fight with like the police, they're like Billy Club or whatever, for like the yeah. cops or whatever. And we're like doing this whole fight with them and stuff. So he wanted to take one from someone and be able to bust it over his leg. <laughs> and they were super thick. So it had to be cut so that it was a trick one and it would just yeah. break over his knee, right? But he had to get it in a certain way. Well, it was like 650 people in the house, like a full house, it was a big theater. And he takes this thing and he hits his knee with it and it probably hurt because he didn't get it right. And he did it again, it didn't work. And I, you know, he's got the adrenaline flowing, there's all these people watching. So he just like threw it on the ground because he couldn't get it to come apart. And it split when he hit it and an end of it flew into the audience and hit a woman in the face. No way. Yes. And it was awful because it didn't hurt her badly, It, but it could have. And right. it brought the whole show to a standstill, to oh, a God. standstill. And we're just like, and he's like, oh, he checked in with her and the husband was mad. And I mean, you know, I mean, it right. was awful. Stuff like that, you know, where yeah. people get hurt is always the the worst but like you know i remember we were doing for a bedlam show we were doing saint joan at this um theater in in um maryland we were doing a long run of hamlet and saint joan and there's just four of us on stage and it's like a probably a couple hundred 250 people a house or something like that so there's this place where i'm supposed to get this letter this long thing and read it and they didn't set it and it's pitch black, we're in the dark, and I look at it with a flashlight and read it. And they didn't, the props people didn't set it. And of course I didn't check, I should have checked my props before the show. And I didn't have that part memorized because I read it every night. Right. So I'm running around, we're looking at dressing rooms and people are trying to just vamp. And I mean, it was like a, it was like a, a minute and a half or something of dead silence on stage. It was awful, <laughs> awful. And you feel so horrible. Um, I hope I helped keep you out of jail. Yeah. You a mason jar drinker over there? It's just for to have something big for water. It's it's just so I look cool and hipstery. Yeah, it looks like moonshine. It really I does. Moonshine. I wish it was. Yeah. But it's not. With that shirt and that and the moonshine jar. I do <laughs> look yeah, you're right. Yeah. I didn't mean to be this wasn't planned. I wasn't trying to be hipstery. I'm definitely not. I man, I am like I uh, now especially after having kids. Like, I don't even know the last time I purchased a piece of clothing or I've gone three and four days without showering during this whole, <laughs> I, I, there's no time. I do that by choice. Uh... <laughs> right. <laughs> just your normal life. Well, I'm just trying to beat my last record, you know? Yeah. Um... Yeah. <laughs> just sometimes, you know, I'm lucky to get them bathed, but me. Yeah. I'll get out of the shower. I'll still have BO. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Anymore. What's that all about? <laughs> You're working too hard in the shower. Well, I'll, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Uh, Why are don't you working with the sweat uh, in there? Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> burning some calories in here. <laughs> I live in a studio apartment. It's the only place I can get privacy. Yeah. Have you ever interviewed? You've not interviewed Susanna, have you? She no, probably. She won't do it. She won't do it, yeah. No. I had a voice uh, cartoon recently. It's really cool. And is that in an, what episode is that? I want to watch not it. not in. It's not in. She doesn't. I don't know if she wants me to put it up. Oh. Yeah. You have to call her. You have to call her agent. <laughs> Could you imagine? Does she make you call her agent? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's the only way I can talk to her nowadays. I'm like, I uh, can uh, Zuzana uh, voice my cartoon? I'll give her two <laughs> back rubs. Oh, you get 20%? Get yeah, on over yeah. here. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell me about uh, your other TV experience. You were in a Disney Plus uh, oh, thing, weren't you? Yeah. Actually, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, it didn't sound I, fun I, when you went. <sighs> that reaction was really just because you know about it, not because oh. I didn't have a good time. That was my foray into reality TV, you know. The guy who was the creator of this particular show saw a production of Beauty and the Beast, the Disney musical that I directed it in at Oregon Shakespeare Festival a few years back. Big production. So then later along comes this show that he developed, which is basically about finding high schools around the country and picking like a, let's say they did a musical in 1985. And then they would find that original cast. Yeah, wherever they are in life now. Yes, bring them back to the school and put up the musical in one week, which is a lie because we really had three days out of that week. It was, yeah. I mean, it was nothing. To put on the musical, one of the episodes was going to be Dis Beauty and the Beast. And he had seen mine. So he said, well, let's get that director to come do the show. And so I did. Yeah. Um, it was fun. It was fun to watch how a how they yeah. do, how a reality show really gets put together. And you have to have cameras behind this scene. Yeah, I was totally uh, an on camera person. So I was like a character on the show, just myself, but I was like yeah. the director. Yeah. yeah. So I had to do exercises with the actors. They wanted, you know, a whole exercise where we, so I sort of make them all cry, and, you know, that kind of thing. And yeah. rehearsals, and there were all kinds of drama, you know, crazy stuff going on that was funny behind the scenes. And it was great. It was fun. And, you know, I found out by the end, they really want, the producers wanted me to be a little meaner. Yeah. I can and imagine. I really went in there trying not to be a jerk because I'm like, right. ever people are going to watch this. And I don't want them to think I'm a jerk in the room directing right. people. And these, these people are coming back. They're not actors. You know, they're not. Yeah. They wanted the juicy bits. Like. Yeah. And I was, I was really nice and kind of like a good cheerleader. Yeah. That's what I thought was supposed to be the thing. That's I should have been meaner. I probably would have been edited in a lot more. Yeah. You stupid know the in yeah. line right yeah, yeah. exactly like i was gonna hire a, a reality crew to to like um follow me around drinking not really for a show i just wanted well, to remember well, what well. i did right. you know what I mean? like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that seems like an expensive way to to yeah. do it you should totally have a reality crew follow you around drinking i can't we're not 10 idea. months sober now I mean, oh, that's right. You're not drinking. I not know that. Drinking. I know. I'm, I feel less fun. Maybe on the road, because I've been doing, like I told you, I was doing the Bars of America, right? <laughs> yes. Where, and it's cool because we're playing like anything. I don't, I don't know if the word hillbilly is uh, acceptable anymore, but we played some hillbilly places. And uh, like there was so much camouflage there. Do you know what I mean? Like, and yes, yes. No one was going hunting. They were like <laughs> out for dinner, you know? What <laughs> yeah. <I mean? laughs> yeah, of course. You wouldn't believe the, the stuff people say to you after, you know what I mean? Or like they pull you aside. Yeah. And like, yeah. You know, this is the middle of COVID and you wouldn't even know that they've ever even heard of it. Like ladies oh were like God. up on me and stuff. Um, you know what I mean? They were like, oh my God. You're like, I've never seen a real haircut before. You know what I mean? Like, oh. um, <laughs> I wish you had this on. See, that's why you need a, a reality. You're right. I do. To do the Bars of America tour. Would, yeah. I think someone would pick that show up. That, that Come on, be, that's amazing. Thing. Yeah, because the whole you idea was... Susanna should be together a reality show. I would watch imagine. that. Here would be an episode of the me and Susanna reality show. It would be a camera behind the, the couch, and yeah. it would be the back of our heads watching yeah. your show on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Again, thank you very much. It's so good to see you. Can't wait you to see too. you in your life. Um, and, uh, oh, tell people where they can find you. Okay. Okay. Uh, you mean where they can find me? Like, <laughs> yeah, let's reshoot that. Just give a, give a, give me like your uh, website information. Oh, right. that stuff. <laughs> okay. I was like, do you want my address? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me, yeah. Let me, hold on. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> You're like where they can find me. <laughs> oh, I thought you were like, <laughs> like people are going to be following me or so. I, where can the, <laughs> Like I was hiding out. Who? <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't want people to find me. Okay, I I, I, I will tell. Yes, I have a website.
Here we go. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> I can't stop. All right. All right. All right. I'm a pro. Watch this. Watch this. Thank you so much for joining me here. <laughs> so dumb. If if people are interested in 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 your your prod, fuck. fuck. Thanks for so much for joining me. It's been a <laughs> a lot of fun if anybody wanted to to find you where could they do that uh they can go to bedlam.org and see all kinds of information there sweet so go to bedlam.org check them out very very good stuff um i, I hate theater by the way i i, <laughs> I know I, you do i, I hate it i know I, and i've had some good times at your show so <laughs> check them out eric tucker bedlam theater company bedlam.org that's the end of the low budget show. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Woo!